I would like to introduce our chairman, Stephen Robertson. Thanks, Stephen. Thanks, uh, thanks, Julie. Um, well, what a hard act to follow. Uh, you are. Um, you've destroyed my speech. Um, but in, in such uh, a wonderful and empowering, empowering way. Firstly, thank you for acknowledging that uh, we of the scenic rim of the Uruguay First Nations country is now centre of the known universe. So thank you for that. You are, um, in fact, uh, for our part of the world, um, it's been a pretty important month because we uh, received um, recognition by Lonely Planet as, as one of the top ten destinations in the world to visit. <laughs> now, that didn't, that didn't come about because of raping and pillaging the land. Rather, it's come about over the millennia of protecting what is just a beautiful landscape. And in acknowledging that, you can't do anything but also acknowledge the history that you were, has, has taken us through today. As you were was taking us through the, the, uh, the journey around southeast Queensland, I uh, couldn't help but reflect that um, the journey of the Uruguay to the coast uh, would have been much easier in the day because I'm sure they didn't need to negotiate the Western Freeway on a wet day into Brisbane. I reckon they'd have got here a lot earlier. But that introduction to what we are, are all about today couldn't be more, more apt. You were also mentioned Debing Mission. For those of you who know where Debing Mission is, it's on the outskirts of Ipswich, on the border with the scenic rim. And if you've driven out that way recently, you will just, you will be reminded in such a visually impactful way about the pressures that we are experiencing here in southeast Queensland, because what used to be the Debing mission is now Debing Heights. And if over the last three, four months, you've seen how Debing Heights is becoming the next go-to residential area on the peri-urban boundaries of, of Ipswich and Brisbane, then you will have seen the removal of millions of tonnes of old growth and regrowth uh, woodland as the urban footprint continues its inexorable march out um, to western parts of southeast Queensland. So when we rejoice about Scenic Rim being uh, voted as it was, as one of the top 10 destinations, it reminds us that the challenge is very much with us today as to how we will allow, or whether we will allow, that encroachment of population and residential growth to impact on some of our most important natural assets. I often mention when I'm asked to speak at events uh, back in the day, 2011, uh, of the floods that occurred. Over that decade, there are now one million more people calling South East Queensland home. That's a big number, and it shows no signs of letting up. So what we do today in celebrating 21 years of on-ground hard yakka by so many of you in this room, um, is, is to celebrate that, but also reminds us of the challenges ahead. Before talking further about what those challenges are and how we're responding to them, can I first of all acknowledge um, my fellow directors who are here today, Melissa Impiazzi just there, um, Simon Warner, I haven't seen Simon, but I know he's here, um, Cameron Costello, of course, who's just joined us, as our first Indigenous uh, Director of Healthy Land and Water, which reminds me to mention how proud we are of uh, our Reconciliation Action Plan, which has now been recognised and endorsed by the Federal Government. Um, I th Nikki, Nikki Patiri-Collier is, is here as well, who chairs our Risk and Audit Committee. 
Um, I'm not too sure about Rhett Duncan. I haven't seen Rhett, but he's a, a new director as well. And we have apologies from Nadia O'Connell and Mayor Karen Williams. As I mentioned, today we are honouring 21 years of exceptional work. We're also, uh, uh, we're also celebrating 21 years of, of collecting the necessary evidence across catchments in South East Queensland that informs us what we must do, where we must prioritise our actions. And that is fundamentally important to what healthy land and water is all about. Of course, healthy land and water in itself um, hasn't been around for 21 years. We are an amalgam of two organisations with, with a very proud history here in South East Queensland. Healthy Waterways and, of course, SEQ Catchments. I'll just mention SEQ Catchments first because, for me, um, having had a relationship over the long term with South East Queensland Catchments, what's always, always inspired me is how they bring together the thousands of volunteers that get out every weekend in our creeks, our beaches, our landscapes, and do what I've termed earlier as the hard yakka, whether it be planting trees, restoring creek banks, um, you name it. I, I remain in awe of the work that is done by, by the community. Healthy Waterways, of course, was born of some pretty challenging times back in the late 1990s when out in Moreton Bay, if you remember, we used to see those algal blooms and fish kills. And it was then Lord Mayor Jim Sawley who, who understood the need to get the science right to inform us how we needed to respond to that. And the fact that over the, the last 21 years we've seen a verifiable improvement across a range of indicators in terms of the health of Moreton Bay speaks volumes about the work that was done from the early 2000s and continues, continues today. And it reminds me to also acknowledge those who have come before me as Chair of, of uh, Healthy Land and Water. Uh, Professor Paul Greenfield, Leith Booley and Rod Lehman as former Chairs of Healthy Waterways and the late John Nugent, Gordon French and Robert Smith as Chairs of SEQ Catchments. Those six individuals have provided the foundations of the organisation, along with directors, past and present, past Margie Milgates here, who have done so much to make us what we are today. Ladies and gentlemen, the agenda before us today, I hope you will find inspiring, because that's how I feel about chairing this, this organisation. So many of you out there, out here today, I recognise as part of the Healthy Land and Water team. You are, each of you, in my mind, exceptional ambassadors for what it means to protect uh, this valuable bit of real estate on this little blue dot we call the earth. But what makes me most proud is the dedication of team members like Joel, who have reached out to First Nations people in South East Queensland and taken us all on a journey that I think we can rightfully say we are leaders in the field of how we not just respect First Nations people but engage with them and inform our decision making now and into the, into the future. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you all for being here today. Um, today is a day of celebration but it's also a day to remind us of the challenges ahead with your continuing support particularly over the next decade as we lead up to the Olympics is an opportunity to showcase this very special part of the world and if we are to tr truly have a green Olympics then the people in this room have a vital role to play in informing leaders whether it's council whether it's state whether it's commonwealth and the broader community about what it actually means to have a true green sustainable Olympics in 2032. Thank you again for being here. Thank you for your ongoing support and thank you for your ongoing hard yakka. Thanks very much.